We're now going to talk a little about roll-ups and consolidations in aesthetic plastic surgery. We've seen it across verticals for over 20 years already on all and many other verticals. And now we're being uh, inundated by many uh, roll-ups and consolidation algorithms and so forth. So we had actually 16 we looked at and we decided on these four. Uh, these were the best we, we found of the 16 that we reviewed. So welcome and thank you all very much for coming. Uh, I'd like to start and move right on down the line. I'd like you to tell us your name, the name of the company that you're working with. And maybe we'll start uh, at 40,000 feet, maybe your overall philosophy, what the value proposition is uh, for the investor. Perhaps we start that way and we'll drill all the way down to the differences, if you will. So let's start gen generically. Who are you and what's your company? Start. Um, I'm Kyla Griggs. I'm the Chief Aesthetic Officer at Forefront Dermatology. Um, Forefront Dermatology is one of the largest roll-ups of dermatology plus plastic surgeons um, in the U.S. We have um, over 500 um, providers, 200 plus, 250 plus rooftops, um, and well on the way to being a billion dollars. Um, from a 40,000 feet standpoint, I think the investor is very interested in this um, industry, particularly in the aesthetics, because of how fast it's growing. The fact that it's cash pay um, and that there's so many synergies between um, aesthetics, dermatology, um, obviously plastic surgery, and um, other adjacencies that might be on the horizon. I think it's a very attractive market. Thank you. Dr. Ronan. My name is Steve Ronan. I'm uh, one of the founders and chairman at Premier Plastic Surgery Partners, and we're a new platform of three practices that have come together with a minority private equity interest, and so we're more physician controlled. And um, our model is more uh, pl plastic surgeons, facial plastic surgeons, uh, multi-surgeon surgery centers um, with med spas. And um, we uh, have built all of our infrastructure and are now starting the uh, acquiring process. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Daniel Schachter, the CEO of Cosmetic Physician Partners. We are um, we started actually in Canada almost 15 years ago in this space. We're solely focused on cosmetics. Um, today, we're over 40 clinics across the United States uh, and everything from uh, some of the best uh, doctors like Dr. Jay Burns, uh, Paco and Heather Canellis, and a number of other doctors as well. Um, Really excited to be here. We're going to talk a little bit about our, uh, ourselves on the panel. I think one of the other differentiating factors for us is that we are doctor owned. We do not take any private uh, equity dollars, um, which is a pretty unique spin on how this. I am uh, Todd DeYoung. I'm the CEO of Latticeworks Capital Aesthetics. Uh, we are a fast growing. Uh, holding company, acquiring and uh, partnering with some of the leading aesthetic practices in the United States, uh, providing both plastic surgery and aesthetics. Um, attracted to the industry for many of the reasons others have voiced, uh, very fast growing, um, relatively unapproached by private equity in a meaningful way. Uh, and we think there's a great opportunity by partnering with these practices to provide some ancillary services such that we really create a better experience for patients, uh, a better experience for our practices and our doctors and do so in a way that creates a very compelling proposition for uh, investors as well. Thank you, Todd. We're gonna give you the next question and we'll come right back this direction. So which practice or market demographics fit into your sweet spot for Latticework Capital Aesthetics? And why should a surgeon choose your firm over these others? Good question, excellent question, Grant. Um, so what we're looking for, uh, number one, are uh, great surgeons, great practices, uh, but surgeons that are really in a mindset of growth, people who are not just looking for an exit but are looking to accelerate, people who think there's a better way. We're looking for practices that want to be part of something bigger, uh, part of uh, really something very innovative in this space. Um, and we're looking for practices that want to collaborate as well. Those are the key things we look at. We want practices that are healthy, obviously, 
the practices that really want to partner and uh, grow rapidly. Um, why us? Number one, our uh, private equity sponsors are very focused on healthcare. They know it well, uh, and they have a very successful track record. Uh, I've been in private equity for about 15 years. I've worked with a variety of firms. Uh, Latticeworks is the best I've worked with. And our management team, most of whom I've worked with in the past, have a great track record of doing uh, similar things. Slightly different industries, but all um, distributed medicine, private pay, uh, higher ticket items, very successfully. Uh, both in clinical support, you know, supporting our practices, but also in the more commercial aspects, marketing, uh, helping in the consult room, uh, technology and platform building as well. So you're the CEO and you mentioned Latticework Capital. Uh, were you, have you worked with them before? You seem to have some knowledge base, and if so, where did you work? Uh, I have not, but I've heard of them. I have uh, some of my <laughs> colleagues who know them well. Uh, I have worked with other private equity companies, though, in the space. Daniel. So on our side, when we're looking for uh, a practice, um, typically about 50% of our practices have a plastic surgery component, so it's a large part of it. The other 50% is split between derm or non-core, meaning med spa only. So we tend to straddle both sides of uh, the aisle on that side. Um, similar to Todd, the thing that matters most to us is a partnership. So a long-term minded uh, owner who wants to join a group, a physician-led group, meaning all of our practices have physicians at them, um, who is looking for at least five years to be with us. Uh, lastly, I would say is we're going to be a little bit different in the mix of how much, uh, you know, when someone goes through this, how much cash is paid up front versus how much equity. Again, a lot of our uh, doctors take a significant portion in equity, which provides a lot of upside to them. So those are few factors that will differentiate us in the market. If you think about what we do that is different, um, one of the advantages of being in the market for a little bit longer than many of the other groups is we have a lot of the resources set up. So everything from uh, back-end teams, um, you know, uh, we, we do hear quite a bit, you know, oh, we talk about marketing, but do you actually have a marketing team? We do. We have, uh, you know, everything you would need from payroll, marketing, HR, you name it. Uh, number two is the community side. Um, at a certain scale, we now have a lot of community activities, whether that be uh, online tools for people to communicate all the way up to uh, in-person gatherings on a yearly uh, basis. Um, even just as an example, tomorrow, a group of 15 doctors are here today. We're all going to be joining up. So that community side is another place where we really stand out. So if you're looking for partnership and ownership, as well as that community aspect, CPP is probably a good place for you. Thank you. Dr. Ronan. Much of what we're looking for is exactly what you guys also said, our, our friends and other platforms. And this is really... Um, it's a unique time for us as plastic surgeons in that um, we've never really had a good exit plan before. Um, it was bring on a junior partner and take some tiny fraction of what you uh, invested in your business over the years back. And um, it's it's very exciting for us to now be part of some, some value creation and um, having a return on our investment um, from all the hard years and, uh, and and everything that we built in our businesses, and so we're looking for partners um, much the same, uh, heavily surgeon, um, also with med spas um, that want to work at least through a next transaction. Um, so we're not looking for people who are looking uh, to exit immediately, um, and it's been um, it's been quite a ride it's it's uh, we're on the newer side and so we've created um the professionalization and the integration and the data warehouses and um the all the sort of fancy analytics um that we've all been sort of talking about um and now we're sort of ready to plug uh plug everybody into that and so it's been quite a fun ride awesome I, we're looking for the same type of people um, I think one of the things about Forefront is that it started as a physician-owned group with no private equity. And as it grew to scale, it had to go for private equity in order to continue to grow. Um, and that's why it's the size it is today. 
Um, its current equity partner is Partners Group, which is um, very large, uh, very stable um, partner. So from the standpoint of stability, unlikely to go out of business, et cetera, et cetera, um, it's a great partner to have. The other thing about Forefront is that it's kept its physician ownership autonomy mentality. So we have um, physician boards, we have physician partners, I have multiple physician partners that I work with on an everyday basis. So we're really looking for board certified physicians that want to join and have a leadership profile within our organization to help us go to um, the next level and to continue to grow. Like my colleagues here, I think we don't want people that want to exit in a couple of years. We're really looking for long-term partners. But having said that, we also want partners that are um, honest about what they want. So if they are looking to exit at some time, then to partner with us on succession planning. And we have a whole infrastructure for being able to identify physicians, et cetera, that can join us. Um, we have really two types of physicians, those that are partners that we have um, partnered with in an acquisition model, but we also have a significant portion of our physician who are employed physicians. So we have a very good team at, at hiring and bringing on physicians that don't maybe want to build their own business and put all that capital out and want to use the capital that's available in our organization in order, order for us to pep and partner with um, our already acquired physicians to make them larger and bigger. I'd say we're also looking for physicians that are entrepreneurial in mindset and want to grow um, and leverage the capital that is available from Partners Group in order to do um, M&A or de novos, et cetera, et cetera. So it's pretty much a very broad scope. I My advice to you would be know what you want um, and then come to the table with a very clear idea of what you're hoping to get out of the partnership. And it's much easier for us to then customize either what we can do or be very honest about what we can't do and exit the process that's as valuable to you as it is to us. Thank you. How long has Forefront been in practice, if you will, or been in existence? A couple of decades. Is that right? And how many physicians do you have in Forefront? We or have, practices, however you want to express it. How large is it? We have 250 roof, rooftops and over 500 clinicians. And what percentage are derm versus plastics? Oh, much higher derm. We're primarily derm right now. We purchased um, and had four plastic surgery organizations join us in the last 18 months. And what percentages of the derms are medical derms versus aesthetic derms? We are around, a, well, majority of our derms do some form of aesthetics. We have um, probably a third that are more than 50% are aesthetics. Yeah. And we have several that have partners that are aesthetics, <laughs> derm, plus plastic surgeons. And what about med spas? Does Forefront embrace med spas within the practice, or what's the concept there? We have um, a couple of standalone med spas. We only tend to embrace those that are physician-led or already physician-run um, and owned. I'd say our philosophy is very much about making sure that it's a physician-led organization by board-certified physicians um, versus that are in the um, specialty of plastic surgeon or dermatology. Are you, and you look ahead for Forefront, are you thinking of adding more plastic surgeons? Is that on your plan? Yes, that's why I would be here. Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to ascertain. That's exactly what I wanted to determine, let everyone know. We love our plastic surgeons. Don't worry, you're all going to get the same <laughs> variation of those questions. We actually have, um, we have a physician board, plus we have a dedicated medical aesthetics board, and a Within the Medical Aesthetics Board, we have plastic surgeons on those boards. Our plastic surgeons are involved in the whole M&A process. So they, if we do identify a plastic surgery that we would like to partner with, we have our plastic surgeons involved in that process so that it's colleagues to colleagues um, communication. Okay, I'll come back to you. Steve, how long has your organization been in existence? Uh, we've been in existence for about 10 months. 
And you, and how many physicians or practices do you have? I think you mentioned a moment. We have three practices and seven physicians. Okay. Yeah. Um, and are you open? Uh, you're primarily right now. It's three. So are they all plastic surgeons? All we have two facial, and then I'm a plastic surgeon. And do all three of the practices have a med spa? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of us have a pretty healthy. So in terms home. of your management um, skills and offerings to the practices, you also help with the med spas, I assume. And do they all have surgery centers? Absolutely. Two two of the three of us have surgery centers. Um, definitely, I think it's something we want to we value is having your own surgery center. Would you know or would you care to share with us what percentage of your gross revenues drive from med spas or non-surgicals? Um, probably about 35%, 40%. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I guess it may be beyond the scope to ask you about your gross revenue. I was going to ask you, but I suppose that's probably proprietary. Maybe Dan will share his. I know his, but, well, I know from my program that he was on. Dan, how long has CPP been around? So the, the U.S. entity has been around since 2021, so just over just under three years right now. And uh, are you agnostic as to what aesthetic providers join you, or are you primarily plastics or derm or facial? What's your approach there? Yeah. So we have a very strict no asshole policy. So that is that is the differentiator. I guess I'm out. It's a good lad. It's good. Um, and uh, so that's the thing that we, we really focus on. But we we do not necessarily uh, angle one way or another. But we are very very referral based. So we have skewed plastic because again. A plastic surgeon will know another plastic surgeon and love what's going on with us and then say, hey, my friend XYZ, I think would be a great um, great practice to join the group and vice versa. So we're 50% plastic surgeon focused and then we have um, about 20% derm and then the remaining 30% is non-core uh, physician. Non-core physicians. Yeah. Now, how do you go about vetting them? You said the referral process is from within and your, your members. Yep. And I've heard about that. How do you go about vetting? And then is it, a tr is it true you have a vote amongst your owners and members and it has to be unanimous? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great question. Uh, every single practice that joins, so we do a board meeting once a month. All of our doctors as the primary shareholders are part of that board meeting. They all have veto over every single practice that joins, um, which is an important distinction for us. How many, pla how many doctors are on that board meeting? Uh, a little over 40 these days. So you're herding a lot of cats, and you're telling me that it has to be unanimous? It has to be one, unanimous. one outlying vote against a practice from across town or something would that, completely yeah. veto it? You, you know what? It, it, you would, if you think about it at the end of the day, we're all trying to achieve the same thing here. We want to make sure that the practices who join are good practices that... Our constituents, which is our shareholders, whether it be private equity or other doctors, are going to also be successful, right? You don't want to bring in a, a, a bad fish or a bad egg into your group because that, that will taint the rest of the group. So everyone has the same motivation. And as long as we're all very clear on the motivation and asking why, it tends to go over very well. But in fairness, three to four times a year, we do get a, a practice that on paper looks great but for uh, a cultural reason, might not be a great fit. That's typically the reason why, and those practices are not, uh, not invited to join. Okay. Um, Todd, same sort of questions. How long has uh, the organization that you're working with been in practice, which I refer to as latticework aesthetics, uh, as to the A word, but how long, how, how's, what's the size? If you care to sh share the gross revenue, that's fine, but you don't have to. But the number of practices or practitioners, either one. Yeah. How big are you? How old are you? Type. Been in uh, place a little over three years. Um, we have just under thirty, you know, twenty-five-ish doctors. Um, I can't give you all the numbers we have publicly. That's always a dangerous thing to do in a forum. I like figured some, but um, we are primarily plastics oriented. Uh -huh. um, less than twenty percent of our revenue does come from non-invasive treatment, but we think that's a big opportunity as well. There's no question about that. I would encourage you to pursue that. Okay, I'm going to start back with you, Todd, and work back this way. I'm going to change the direction a little bit. Um, kind of a why should a physician join you, but I'm twisting a little bit. What are the advantages? So as I talked to Dr. Ronan earlier today, obviously when a person uh, sells their practice to you or becomes a partner with you, 
They can take back equity, they can take back cash, or they can take back debt. That's basically the deal, right? So can you share with us what Latticeware Capital's overall structure is? I'm sure it's dependent on the deal, but if a, if a person's looking at you and they're thinking, why should I join Latticework versus any of the other ones here? Yeah. Can you give uh, us a flavor for, do you have debt, equity, and uh, uh, cash? Or what's your approach? Yeah, it's primarily equity. Okay. Um, the thing we strive for in all our deals, and to your point, Grant, they're all a little different, is alignment. You know, we want to make sure the deal is such that everybody's aligned uh, to do something better for patients, uh, to do something better for investors, uh, but also to do something better for themselves and the holding company. And that means collaboration and their incentive to grow. Uh, and so it's a multi prong uh, uh, model uh, where they can retain local ownership, want them incentive to run their practices as well, if that better than they had been, but also get the upside of being part of something bigger, not only financially, but being part of a bigger, uh, more cohesive network of doctors uh, premier doctors that they can work with, uh, research together, do fellowship programs and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dan, care to tell us what you pay, uh, pay people to join you? Yeah. I, I, sure. I mean, go for it. You told them on my, on my show. Yeah. Might as well share it again. I mean, it's public now. It's public now. I mean, if any group is underbidding, Shame on them. I think that that's that's not fair to the group. I mean, typically these days you see ranges somewhere between six and nine. It's kind of funny having a dog on stage with you. But very cute dog. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of comforting. Um, so six to nine is typically where the range, that's it's a multiple. Uh, for those unfamiliar, you multiply your EBITDA by that number and you get generally the valuation. Just as a sneaky note, Everyone will have a different EBITDA, so everyone focuses on the multiple, but the EBITDA is just as important to focus on in a multiplier equation. So, you know, typically six to nine is, is the right range. If you're very heavy surgical, generally the number is a little bit lower. Um, that's because it tends to focus on fewer people, harder to replace a doctor. If you're more med spa, typically we see that range ratchet up. If you have more locations, larger size, again, that range ratchets up. So... That's that's kind of the high level in terms of the pricing that's done. Um, in terms of you know how we're we're oriented or, or thinking about the the purchase side there, um, for us, if you're joining, you're joining. It isn't a JV. Some models are more like a JV. I, I don't know. I'm not trying to to steal, but you know, it sounds like you guys have uh, where the doctor retains ownership of their own four walls. The way that we structure it is, you join a hundred percent. Um, but you get shares in CBP or the, the mother mothership, as some people call it. And that means you have just as much ownership in Dr. J. Burns's practice as Dr. J. Burns has in yours and vice versa. So that's, uh, that's our model. Um, and it's typically about 50, 50 in terms of equity and cash up front, which again is quite unusual in the space. If let's say you're a doctor and you're looking to sell, you'll see ranges anywhere from 50-50, all the way up, we've heard to 90-10, meaning 90% cash, 10% equity. We call that a buyout. That doesn't really align the incentive between uh, the person who's selling everything in cash and shares. But again, depending on what you're looking for, that might be more what you're looking for, or you might be looking more of that equity structure. Um, it'll it'll definitely mean different things in terms of short-term cash versus cash in five years. Yeah, did you say you would pay 90-10 or others pay 90-10? We you definitely would not pay me. Yeah, I was going to say, you're about a 50-50 model, right? Correct. That's what you said Correct. before. Okay. Just want to make it perfectly clear. We know the range is enormous. Uh, do you offer any debt? So we are extremely low debt. Um, and the reason for that is our doctors own this. So sometimes you'll hear groups that have four, maybe even six X leverage. We're sub two. We're closer to one times leverage. So that's a very, very unique blend but it creates a very different risk profile, um, which if your doctors are all massive shareholders, we think is important. And I'm sure everyone has heard of some of the goofs that have happened in this in this industry over the last year and a half. We want to make sure we avoid that. Okay. Dr. Ronan. So um, we, there are different models and they're going to require sort of different purchases, but, but um, we believe, I think like like you guys, that we want to create alignment with um, the practice we're acquiring and, and our business. And 
Um, when you do too much cash up front, which I think we've seen, um, you can run into really big problems because um, there's not a, a lot of incentive to stay anymore or work. So you might go do something else um, and that can really hurt your business. And so we're, we're sort of more of a balance between cash debt and, and equity. And um, we'll do, and, and this is modifiable, of course, but we do around a third cash, around a third uh, a note held by who we're acquiring. And, um, and that's sort of more of an incentive to, to make sure they're sticking around, um, and then about a third equity. And so um, in our discussions, we're finding that to be a pretty, pretty balanced model and um, pretty acceptable to the physicians and creates um, quite a bit of alignment because we're essentially all going to go to the same place, set of eyes to go to the same place. Okay. Michaela. So not too different. It tends to be customized to the individual partner that is joining um, the organization. Um, we generally do a mix of um, cash and share. And the amount of shares um, uh, or amount of equity um, really varies depending on um, the partnering physician or the partnering owner as to what they would like um, in the process. So the similar range, 50-50, can be, yes, we can go much to the higher end, particularly for physicians that are looking to do more of an exit and not wanting to stay. They may want to push to the higher end. Um, we are normally looking at organizations as to what is the um, succession plan, who are the other partners, how many do you have in your organization, so that we do have some safety for um, the forefront side of the partnership um, and we normally have some form of um, delayed payment um, of a period of time in order to protect for the downside of suddenly stopping work um, once you've uh, partnered with an organization. Um, so as a real mix, we have very low debt. We are way down in the very low single digits, have the sim very similar philosophy. Um, we want our physicians to feel very secure. Um, and I believe at our size, we can do that. So if you allow or accommodate for physicians who disclose early on in the negotiation process that they want to uh, have a, a smaller or shorter duration, maybe two, three years before they're done, do you pay a lesser multiple when you're doing your valuation? Um, it depends. Okay, uh, that's we fair. We generally do less than five years, um, but we can do it. It really depends on the mix of the clinic. Um, and how we believe the succession plan or how the other colleagues of that practice can help support. So it's very customized. Um, we also tend to be very honest, if we can, of not for us um, when, with too much risk. So we try to have those conversations um, as early in the process as possible. Okay. It's better to be honest, I think, um, than there's, uh, you know, because once you've sold um, and joined an organization, it can be a little bit of a shock um, to the system because you're so used to being on your own, having to make every single decision on your own, having a lot of autonomy. We very much don't want you to lose that autonomy, but have the safety net of all of the back office infrastructure. But at the same time, when you're used to being having a lot of control, losing that control can sometimes be... Um, hard, so it, it's better to have those conversations up front to know what you're getting into. I bet. Well, in an effort to get back on time and get to lunch, I, I still have another question for you, but you're going to lead it. But this will be the last one, unless unless I have to press and ask you something. But um, what what would your comments be to physicians in the audience as to how to prepare? for uh, this type of thing? Uh, what's your advice to them or to industry? It doesn't have to be just to physicians, but I would say to the physicians. And what final words might you have why someone might consider, say, Forefront or whomever, each one of yours? Final closing comments. You can go ahead, Michaela, and start if that's all right. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, well, we'll... So um, I think I try to give um, little bits of advice throughout the um, comments. But I would say the number one thing you can do to help yourself is really understand your business and understand your finances. Um, 
you know, if you need to use a banker, then that's great, but they are going to take a slice of the pie. So if you understand your own financial health and that, that, that really is a, a leg up for you. I think also deeply understanding why you want to partner. Um, and in my humble opinion, just wanting the money is not enough of a reason to partner with a group like ours. That There has to be more to it because we're looking for those partners that want to partner and be leaders in our organization. Um, and I would also say have as many transparent conversations with your colleagues. Um, I actually have been in equity before in a different industry. Um, and that group sold because they didn't like each other. And it was a really bad reason to sell. Um, the partners that we have that do really well are very collegial. They understand their organization, their own group. They like their colleagues. And they also like all of the colleagues that they work with at Forefront. We're a very collegial organization. We have a lot of networks behind the scenes to be able to help um, all of our physicians, our NPs and PAs connect with each other. We have subgroups, we have subcommittees. Our physicians drive everything we do. So if you're not wanting that much engagement, we might not be a good partner for you, but if you want that much engagement to learn from your colleagues, to be part of the future of Forefront, then we're a great place to be. Um, and you get to work with people like me. Great, thank you. Excellent, Steve. So I'll say if you are interested in joining the platform, first is um, grow, grow, grow. You know, drive growth and demonstrate that you can do that. Um, and then you have to understand that it is a, a bit of a rough process to go through it. And so you'll be examined in every which way that you could not even conceive of. And um, it's actually a pretty rough process and it's, um, it goes on for a while and um, it's uh, grueling and it'll, it'll uh, your staff is gonna be working really hard to pull all this together. Um, but you also learn quite a bit about yourself, you know, going through that process. And you also learn um, all of your limitations and weaknesses, you know, going through that process. And um, what's exciting is when you join a platform with all the pooled resources and the infrastructure and the analytics, um, you can uh, really create a lot of value for your practice and do things that you couldn't do by yourself. You know, serve as a as a um, mom and pop shop. You know, you're limited on the amount of analytics you're going to get. You're you're limited on the resources. And um, when you are with the platform with all the pooled resources, you really can um, drive a lot of growth and value. Thank you, Dan. So generally, I think of it in three steps. Steps number one is what can you do beforehand. So at least twelve, but hopefully twenty four months before. You want to get your shop in order. I know it was mentioned before, get your financial sorted. You'd be shocked how many times we get into a diligence and someone lent themselves money, but it went right to the bottom line because they didn't have any cost to lending themselves money. And all of a sudden they thought their profit was a million bucks and now it's 500,000. That's not a shock you want in the process. So get your financials really cleanly sorted out. Potentially you'll even figure out where there are quick levers to improve your business. It'll raise the number that you're going to get. Step two, also mentioned, is know yourself. And I, I'm be very specific about what I mean. Certain of our doctors want to grow and add a second or third or fourth clinic, and they're going to want two or three more lasers for those clinics. Not every single private equity group or, or group that you know partners with will make that easy to happen. Not because they may not want to, but that's just not how they're structured. So it's really important to understand what is the process for whatever your goal is. If your goal is, hey, I wanna wind down over five years, make sure again, the contracts are structured in a way that aligns to you. And then the last step is, make sure you diligence the heck out of the other group. So many times we're diligencing the clinic and I'm shocked that the clinic isn't asking more from us. I'm like, you don't wanna see our financials? We're, you're putting 50% of it into us. You don't wanna call 30 of our references? Um, so, you know, on that side, I would say, don't ever be scared to ask for the financials of the group that you're, you're partnering with. If they're shy about that, that's a red flag. 
Don't ever be shy to ask for references. They give them to you. I wouldn't use them anyways. I would go online and look at some press releases and see who did they not mention and give those people a call. If they're good doctors, they're going to pick up the phone. They're going to talk to you. You'll get a true reference that way. Um, and just make sure you know that group. This is this is a marriage. Make sure you know who you're getting in bed with before you uh, consummate the marriage. Um, I want to go back to your prior question, Grant, because I didn't understand it and just clarify. Um, you talked about our ownership and, and purchase model. It's not all equity. We encourage and we want to partner with practices that want to reinvest in the business and have a, a meaningful equity stake. So just give a standard equation, percentage equity versus cash. Uh, it can really, it can really vary depending okay. on the deal. Fair enough. Um, but I, I, first of all, I, I think everything that has been said around preparation is spot on. You know, I think we're all smiling at each other as we hear the comments. Uh, I would amplify something Daniel said that I think when you're getting ready, make sure you're aligned with your partners on what you want to accomplish in the deal. What are your goals? And then find the right partner. Um, you know, I, I, deals fall apart because people are aligned on what they want to do or they attract the wrong partner. And that is, that's a you know, prescription for disaster. So really be intentional. You know, in your preparation, be intentional around what you are trying to do if you sell and be very thoughtful about who you want to partner with. And that can be a win-win-win all the way around. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. Don't leave yet. So we're about to start our lunch break and a networking lunch. And I want to encourage you to get your food and come here and network with one another. Check out our vendors and our sponsors and our supporters who allow us to have this meeting and enjoy your lunch. It'll be about 45 minutes or so. Right, Craig? We're going to try to pick up five more minutes on this. Uh, but I want to give you, all of you, oh, you want to say something? Yeah, just, just one last thing is what we didn't talk about is what's the exit plan for all of our platforms. And so that's typically like the next transaction, right? So a larger group comes and gobbles up um, a few of us. And so what I'd like to say is that I want all of us to do well because, you know, the rising tide floats all, all boats. And, and what we don't want is, you know, some of the failing platforms. We want all of us to do well because if, if a high percentage of us are doing well, then that's going to facilitate the next transaction, and that's where we're all going to win. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. I'd like to get a picture with the four of you and, of course, Tahoe. Come here, buddy. Yeah.